Okay, this uh, we are here are going to put on a full, what we call a full whip graft, which means the scion piece is just about the same diameter as the tree. And the proper procedure is to cut the tree off about a week in advance or 10 days. Um, and uh, I, to, in order for the tree to um, stop bleeding. Bleeding is a problem with walnut trees. And so about a week before graft, we cut the tree off and we put some gashes in it, and uh, which I did here. And so if, if you put the gashes in a week ago, we'll put some fresh gashes in it today, you see. And we want to go a little ways into the sapwood. And, um, and I should say at this time that the only time that you can successfully whip graft is when you have young trees that are growing very fast, very rapidly. Uh, this tree grew quite well. It was planted last spring. If you plant trees in an, uh, in an orchard as a replant situation or an interplant situation where the little trees are competing with the old trees, you should l let them get uh, two inches or more in diameter and bark graft. And whip grafting is only for very, very fast growing situations. And uh, so we're going to also drill a, a hole in it here uh, to aid in the, well, in the, So we, uh, we've selected a piece of grafting wood, and it has a, um, a primary bud and a secondary bud there, and another primary bud and a secondary bud there. So, and you see that piece is just a whisker smaller than that, so it should fit on there pretty good. Um, So we make a nice flat cut there, uh, and about two and a half inches long. Uh, different people have different techniques. Some people make a pretty short cut, but I don't make little short cuts very often. So this is about two and a half inches long. And then we make our little cut here. This is called whip or tongue grafting, and that's the tongue right there. The little tongue, this is going to lock it into the rootstock. Well. So, we hopefully have a a cut that's very similar, and that looks pretty good, you see. And um, so we're going to make this a cut in this, a tongue in the in the rootstock, uh, so that when we slip it together, it'll be just right. Let's, I guess I should be pointing out that we're trying to match the layer right between the wood and the bark with the layer between the wood and the bark on the rootstock. If you're matching the outside, that's not going to work too well you, because the uh, bark you see is much thicker here than it is on this piece that's been in the refrigerator and perfectly dormant. So we're trying to match under the bark, not the outside. And that, um, it doesn't have to match perfectly all the way along. If it crosses in a place or two, that's pretty good. Um, I'm pretty happy with that.
So we're gonna dye it. And I like to tie it very tight. And uh, some grafters, many grafters, most grafters don't use this tape. They use a uh, about two inch wide or inch and a half or whatever wide um, plain old masking tape. But I am not comfortable with that. I want to pull it up real tight. To demonstrate how to tie the green tape, I will put a second layer on. First, put the end of the tape under the first few loops of tape, then tuck the finished end under the top loop and pull tight. Cut the loose end. Okay, so now to, to tie it off, we just go through there. And nothing to it. So, so that is, um, <coughs> that's um, pretty much it. Now, we then we will Put a little little gumba of black on top and and soon as that dries in a couple hours you paint it white. And that white is very, very important if the weather should turn off hot. If it stays cool, it's not too important. So I like to paint them white just as quick as I can. As these grafts grow, the green tape needs to be cut so that it will not girdle the graft. I do this by making small cuts in the tape after about 12 inches of growth. I will show you with a marker where I cut the green tape. I do it so that the green tape is perforated and as the tree grows, the tree will break through easily, but the tape will support the graft until that happens. If you are using the masking tape, you would not have to make these cuts. We keep all the rootstock sprouts off in this upper area. And uh, any rootstock sprouts down low here, you keep them quite short. Now, there's some difference of opinion there. On the planting in the spring and grafting the same spring, the people that are successful believe that you must keep all the sprouts off all the time. Uh, you don't let them grow at all. And some people, even believe that with an established tree that you keep all the sprouts off all the time. And I inclined them kind of lean that way. So, so then again, uh, oftentimes when the buds start out, they'll have a nut on there too, and then they'll stop and mature up two or three buds, and two or three buds will start out. And so if you want to get maximum growth on the one, you pinch the tip out of the other, just leave one go and uh, you tie it about every foot uh, with this green tape during the summer.